Now that the electronics work was wrapped up in the van, we could move into getting the van finished out. I know I was personally getting pretty tired of dodging the dangling puck lights while working in the van, so we decided to knock out the ceiling first. When deciding on the ceiling, we looked at a few options including plywood, shiplap, and shiplap paneling. And we figured it'd be a lot more challenging to get all of the light locations perfect on one big piece of sheet good material versus on a single plank of shiplap, so we went the shiplap route. We found this thinner, decorative shiplap at a local home center, and it ended up being perfect for this as it was thin enough to conform to the curvature of the van's roof ribs. The first step in getting the shiplap installed was to mark out some layout lines to ensure the shiplap would be parallel to the walls of the van. Next, we could get the first board nailed into place, and we broke each butt joint on a ceiling rib so we had something to nail the board to. We used 3 quarter inch brad nails to fasten the boards, and I considered adding some kind of adhesive between the boards and the furring strips, but this just didn't seem necessary. Once we got to the end of the first row, I needed to describe the angle of the trim piece we installed in the last episode, and I used a scribe tool for this, which came in handy throughout this entire section of the project. The first piece in the second row also needed to be scribed, as the back of the ceiling curves out above the door, and I once again used the scribe tool to mark this out. We also used some paint stir sticks as spacers when installing each new piece. I also added more stir sticks as spacers between the shiplap and trim pieces, since the trim pieces were designed to work without furring strips. The ends of these boards needed to be fastened to the trim piece, and my brad nails didn't want to go into the fiberglass, so instead I pre-drilled and countersunk some holes for screws. All right, cool. Yeah, I think that looks nice. From there, we continued on with the second row, making sure to stagger where we broke the butt joints so two adjacent rows didn't line up, and we again need to describe the piece at the end of the second row. This piece was a little more tricky since it needed to be notched around this corner trim piece, but thankfully, this was pretty simple. I extended my marks with a square and then drilled out the corner with a Forstner bit to add a nice curve to the inside corner of the notch. I finished the notch with a jigsaw, knocked off any fuzzy bits off camera, and then tested the fit, and thankfully, it fit great. This piece also needed to be shimmed due to the furring strips, and I again pre-drilled and screwed it to the trim piece to secure it. I also ran this into the shiplap long, and this will be covered up with a metal trim piece later to create the transition between the shiplap and the headliner. We ran into the first of our LED puck lights on the next row, and we just centered these between the ceiling ribs, drilling the holes for them with a hole saw at the drill press. Also, these were really easy to uninstall and reinstall since we used those Wago connectors, and it was awesome to see the lights installed in the finished ceiling for the first time. I personally think they look great. From there, it was mostly just rinse and repeat, adding the lights where necessary, and also working around the openings for the Max Air fans. While I'm working, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and best of all, it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether that's through text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time, and you can also schedule live sessions whenever it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the professionalism you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom-picked for you, along with more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. To get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash craftedworkshop. That's better H-E-L-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to work. We called the ceiling a wrap, stopping one row short to make sure I could figure out where to mount the upper cabinet in that space, and with that done, I could move on to the plywood walls. So I had honestly been dreading these, and that was mainly due to having to work around so many weird openings between the additional sliding window we added and the two flares. And the cut edges of the metal around these openings looked pretty rough and obviously needed to be covered up, and this was a really finicky process. I started with the window opening, and this involved a slow and tedious circuit of cutting pieces, marking out where they needed to be adjusted, cutting again, test fitting, scribing, etc, etc, until they finally fit. I used a combination of 1x4 boards and leftover shiplap from my shiplap wall here at the shop for this window frame, and the shiplap was perfect as the rabbited edge fit into some of the smaller gaps between the window hardware and the metal of the van. <laughs> 
After cutting a few pieces to rough length, I could cut them to width, making sure to account for the variable depth of the van walls, which get deeper as they go from the top to the bottom of the window opening. The track saw came in very handy here, as I could cut these angled cuts accurately and cleanly since these edges would be what the plywood walls attach to later. I also need to describe these vertical pieces to match the curve of the window. And after lots of test fitting, I finally had the pieces fitting well enough to assemble the trim, which I did at the workbench. This allowed me to clamp everything together, making sure everything was nice and flush, and then I pre-drilled and added screws at each corner so I could easily take the frame apart if I needed to tweak anything. With the bottom portion of the trim fitting well, I measured and added the topmost piece and could test fit the whole assembly. And the trim definitely needed some more tweaking, mostly sanding away corners and sharp edges to match some of the curves, but eventually I ended up with a tight friction fit, which was exactly what I was looking for. I made sure the edges of the trim would leave the plywood flush with the furring strips, which it seemed to, and I also made sure the window still functioned, and thankfully it did. Next, I wanted to attach the whole trim assembly to the window and the van, just to keep it in place until the plywood wall was installed, and attaching this left side was a little tricky since I had nothing to screw the assembly to. Instead, I just added a block of plywood, adding a heavy bead of thick CA glue to the edge where the block would meet up with the window, and besides getting a ton of CA glue on my hand when I grabbed the plywood in the wrong spot, this worked great and seems to be holding extremely securely. On the other end of the trim, I had a furring strip close by, so I just added some additional pieces of plywood to span the distance between the furring strip and the trim. With that done, I could get the plywood panel cut to rough size, and I took a bunch of measurements before making the initial cut. We used quarter inch maple plywood for the walls, and Ty and Teresia had already added a coat of primer and paint to the walls ahead of time. I cut the panel to length, again calling on the track saw, and I would highly recommend a good track saw for a project like this. It'll make your life so much easier. Next, I brought the panel back into the van and marked out where I needed to notch the upper corner, as well as a rough opening for the window. I ripped the panel to width to make sure the seam between the two panels broke on a furring strip, then it was back to the bench to cut out the notch and window opening with the track saw. Also, I undersized the window opening by about three or four inches so I can flush trim the plywood to the window trim once installed. Once those cuts were made, I brought the panel back into the van yet again to test fit it, and thankfully it looked good, so I could mark out where the furring strips were located, so I could mark out screw locations on the panel. Since these screws are going to be exposed in the finished build, I wanted the screws to all be spaced evenly and to line up between the panels, so I used a drywall square to mark out the screw locations. Once the locations were marked, I pre-drilled the screw holes, and then I could bring the panel back into the van for the last time and get it installed. I did add a bead of glue on the top edge of the window trim prior to installing the panel, figuring I could add glue to the other edges after the panel was installed. I tucked the left end of the panel under the L-track and then I could get the panel positioned and start adding the screws. And I used these 3 quarter inch pan head screws from Spax here, and I think they both look decent but also have a ton of holding power. Before adding all the screws, I added a bead of CA glue between where the window trim and the plywood met up, but this was really tricky considering I was working in this super tight area. I would have definitely added glue before adding the plywood in retrospect. Once the glue was added, I could add the last few screws, and I also decided to add an additional strip of quarter inch plywood as a spacer behind the bottom edge of this panel to help smooth the transition between the two panels. The bottom panel was much simpler since there wasn't anything to work around, and I spaced the panels using more stir sticks to leave myself plenty of room for caulk, which will help blend the seam between the two panels. With that, the first wall section was at least roughly installed, so I could move on to the next wall section, and I had a flare opening to deal with here. So Flare Space, who makes these flares, also makes these trim rings, which they sent over, but unfortunately, these trim rings interfered with the L-track needed for the bed system we installed. And this meant some pretty heavy modifications were needed on the trim rings, and I'm not sure I actually would have even used them in retrospect, since this was pretty challenging, as you'll see. I decided the easiest thing to do would be to add an additional piece of wood where the trim ring intersected the L-track, and I marked this location on the trim ring, and then started fitting a board in that location. Once it fit, I screwed it to the trim ring, making sure to pre-drill the holes to avoid splitting the fiberglass, and then I could cut away the excess material with my bandsaw. 
With that done, the trim ring was at least fitting in the opening, and next I needed to describe the newly added board to fit the curve of the flare. I cut the curve with the jigsaw, refined it with my random orbit sander, and with that done, the trim ring was at least roughly fitting. Next came the extremely awkward process of installing the trim ring, which doesn't actually attach to anything but the plywood. To hold it in place temporarily, I used a few strips of painter's tape, and it was at this point I realized the trim ring wasn't actually deep enough since we had added those furring strips. To fix this, I added two layers of quarter inch plywood to the front face of the trim ring, and these strips acted as spacers and will also allow me to round and shape that finished edge to be a little less sharp. After adding two quarter inch layers of plywood, I could finally get the plywood panel installed. This time though, I needed to attach the trim ring to the plywood panel since it was floating behind the plywood at this point. To do this, I marked out screw locations, first measuring where the trim ring was located behind the plywood, and also countersunk these holes so they can be filled later since there were so many of them. With that, the trim ring was thankfully installed, and again, I'm not sure I would have actually used these with this bed system in retrospect. Next, I got the panel below installed, and I had to work around the wheel well here. Thankfully, we had gotten these templates from Titan Vans, which had unfortunately otherwise proved useless since we added these additional windows and trim rings, but there was a template for the wheel well. With that section done, I moved on to the last big section around the flare on the driver's side of the van. And I had some electrical elements to contend with here, including these two gooseneck lights, as well as a USB charger. Before tackling the final trim ring, I decided to go ahead and get the plywood flush trimmed in the two openings I had already installed, and I ran into a little trouble here, as you'll see. So I set up my router with a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit, and this process was going pretty smoothly until I hit some chatter on the top edge. And I didn't really think anything of it since I was routing through a solid three quarters of an inch of plywood here, but when I went to restart the cut, I kept getting more chatter. And after inspecting my router bit a little more closely, it turned out the end with the bearing had completely snapped off, which is definitely a first for me. Oh my God, the bit there. What the hell? And I honestly can't believe a quarter inch chunk of steel snapped in half without more fanfare, but that was the case here. Crazy. Thankfully, I had another quarter inch flush trim bit on hand, and after installing it in the router, I got the rest of the window opening flush trimmed. Now, obviously this was looking pretty rough at the moment, but I'd be adding plenty of wood filler to clean up the seam between the plywood and trim ring. And once everything was filled, sanded and painted, this looked really nice, as you'll see later. Thankfully, flush trimming the window opening went much more smoothly since I was only routing through a quarter inch of material and I was left with a much cleaner edge as well. So even though I was dreading it, I soldiered on with the final trim ring install, and this round was a lot easier since I extended those quarter inch strips so I could screw them directly to the van, which held the trim ring in place much more securely than the painter's tape. Go figure. I also went with power head screws to attach the plywood to the trim ring this time, and they held much tighter and actually pulled the trim ring away from the flare a little bit. The last pieces of plywood to install were these strips near the back door, and these all required scribing. Thankfully, I was getting the hang of this scribe tool and got these strips installed without too much difficulty. There was one last piece to install where the first trim ring met up with the flare, and I scribed a piece of plywood to cover the pretty rough scribe on the trim ring. With that, the plywood was installed, which was a huge relief, and now I could get everything prepped for paint. First, I caulked the seams between the plywood panels with big stretch, an elastomeric caulk, which should hold up to the major temperature swings in a van. Next, I could get all the recessed screw holes in those spots where the router bit broke filled in, and I used this ready patch filler for this. And this stuff is kind of in between Bondo and drywall compound. It goes on really easily and sands nicely, and I just packed it into the areas that needed filling. I also packed it into the areas where the trim ring met up with the plywood since I needed to fill in that rounded edge of the trim ring. I let it dry overnight and then sanded it back the next day, and it looked pretty darn good. Next, we turned our attention to the other trim ring and Ty countersunk the powerhead screws and added the caps before I routed the plywood flush with the trim ring. He repeated the process of adding the filler and after letting it dry overnight, I got it sanded back while Teresia worked on getting the last coat of paint on. They wrapped up painting the rest of the walls and the trim rings and overall, I think these walls and the ceiling look great. And I've got to say, this was definitely one of my least favorite parts of the van build so far, but it's made the van feel like a much more finished space. 
Next up on the to-do list was all of the cabinetry for the van, which I was really excited for, and I'll cover all of that in next week's video. So go ahead and get subscribed and ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss that video. And I'll have links to all the tools and materials I used in the video description below. And last, if you want to support me, check out my Patreon, my merch, or my 3D printed tool accessories, which I'll link to on screen. Thanks for watching y'all, and until next time, happy building. Nice.